guys and welcome to Influence Matters and today we are with the beautiful Erin Nicole TV. <laughs> Hello, thank you so much for having me. Of course, thank you for coming, you're gorgeous, thank you for illuminating um, my day with your presence. Erin, <laughs> um, for those who don't know Erin yet, she's a professional makeup artist, skincare junkie, luxury beauty and lifestyle enthusiast. She's also a dog lover and, of course, a social media influencer. And the particular thing about her is that she's popping on two platforms, Instagram and YouTube. So that's pretty exciting and I can't wait to kind of like get a little bit more in your world and get to know you more. Yes, I'm so excited to be here. You basically studied as like a personality, TV personality, and then you decided to build your own YouTube channel and so people can, I guess, get a little bit more in your pink bubble. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So it all started, I actually began my career working in broadcasting. I reported local news. I started in Lafayette, Louisiana. Before I got the job, I couldn't have pointed it out on the map, but as soon as they said, you're hired, I said, okay, I'm gonna pack my bags and I'm gonna move. It was the best thing I could do because I knew I wanted to work in television but I didn't have the training. I didn't study broadcasting in college. I was an English major, so I interned, I hustled, I worked side jobs, trust, trying to get my foot in the door. And while I was working in broadcasting, that's where I really built up my expertise, working with equipment. That's one of the toughest things for anybody who's starting a YouTube channel is making sure that you understand how to edit, what's the best way to shoot lighting, sound. Yes. There is so yes. much that goes into it. Um, so I did have a little bit of a head start in that department. And then eventually I ended up meeting my husband. We moved, for, at the time I was living in New Orleans, Louisiana. And I thought I would never leave. I loved it. I loved my job. I was working at WGNO. So it was more of an entertainment news channel. Yes. Which was great. Um, such a wonderful experience. But then whenever I moved with him to Nashville, I needed something to do. And I was always really interested in beauty. And I loved, this was the time actually that Instagram had just started. And when Instagram first became popular and was growing, I didn't want to join. I said, no, I'm on Facebook. I don't need Instagram. Who <laughs> needs Instagram? How funny. There's, there's and now Facebook. she has 12.2 thousand followers. How funny is that? You know, and um, it's so funny. And now we have TikTok and there's always something new. And I just, it's hard to do different platforms, but it is, it, you just have to go with it and, you know, be flexible and roll with the times. And so eventually I did get on Instagram and I started to see these, women who were so beautiful and creative and inspiring and I yes. thought you know what I could do this I know how to edit I know how to film I have this background I'm gonna start my own YouTube channel you do everything on your own yes one woman show okay so this <laughs> girl tough. is amazing guys if you check out her page on Instagram or even her YouTube content everything is so well curated Everything looks so perfect, so well defined. The quality, the colors, um, even the products that you do, you pick. It's like it's always. Uh, I'm always like, wow, really, like uh, as I'm looking at your content because I can see, I can understand all the work that's, that that uh, exists behind that. And I, um, I think that what's what's super important to to say now is that that was not even like what you got um, your degree from. Like no, you literally yeah. learned everything from scratch. Of course. And. Um, that's the same story for me and that just shows that Pretty much if you have that passion you you can also do that. That's all it is It's the passion because I feel like everybody Everybody has influence everybody has something to say mm -hmm. But the people who are really passionate about what they stand for the message that they want to get out um, What type of content they want to create they have a real vision and they're willing to be dedicated those are the people who are really going to flourish and, and find themselves really paving a path and creating a, a bigger audience for themselves. What type of um, videos, because you have like a lot of playlists between like um, 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 open boxing, um, you also show like the best brands, yeah. um, also give tips for like closing and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, 
what type of videos on on your YouTube channel works the best? What do you think you your followers like? They they just love that type of content more particularly. Yeah, so that's actually a really great question because when I started my channel, I just was doing beauty in general, mm -hmm. and what I quickly realized was that it was tough to grow. And I think that's one mistake that a lot of people make when they're first starting out is that they kind of cast too wide of a net and they really need to niche down. So it wasn't until I actually got hired by Chanel Beauty. I worked mm -hmm. for Chanel at the counter for a couple years. I didn't Excuse realize. Me, yeah. Yeah. I, don't know. I know it was and at the time I was just Chanel, so <laughs> desperate for a job to be working. I was just so grateful for the opportunity to actually be formally trained because previously I wasn't a working makeup artist. I didn't. I was self-taught from watching YouTube videos. So Which is awesome. I had this opportunity, yeah, to actually be trained by one of the most prestigious luxury brands. I didn't really realize that there was sort of this void in the beauty community on YouTube where there weren't a lot of luxury beauty mm -hmm. channels. So as soon as I started integrating Chanel videos on my channel. I started to grow and that's really when I learned that okay there is an audience for this if I niche down and I focus on luxury beauty I might have a chance to actually build something from there and so those uh, videos to this day do the best so I do awesome. a lot of Chanel luxury brands mm -hmm. uh, luxury that's brands. basically what people how they identify you they identify you with like exactly. okay because when I think about your even your Instagram feed If there's one brand that comes to mind, it's definitely Chanel. Yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> it's my favorite brand for sure. And I think, it, you know, I love luxury beauty because it, it there's just, uh, there's quality, there's story. The pieces uh, are generally very inspired. There's never, the brand or the products that they put out always tie back to the brand and to the heritage. There's always something really interesting behind the inspiration. So I really love that. But I don't think... You certainly don't have to spend a lot of money on beauty to be beautiful, but I think there is um, something to be said about investing in quality pieces. Um, do you know your followers? I think so. <laughs> Whether it's on YouTube or Instagram, do you feel like you kind of have a sense of like, I know them, they, they won't really like that, or you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, it's something that you have to develop, and I think there's sort of a push and pull that creators sometimes feel because we know our style and the content that we want to mm -hmm, create. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't always align with what your audience wants from you. Exactly. So I do think, um, I've certainly learned a lot about my audience and what they like. There have been times that I thought, oh, this is a great video idea. <laughs> this is what I'm so excited about this. And then it flops. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so then you, you quickly learn, okay, this is what people are really interested in. I think people want informative videos i think people want to learn something from your content i think you when you bring value to people then it does create that connection because then they're more invested in you and you can become more invested in them what's really interesting with you is that you can do that on both platforms with two different type of con of content mm -hmm. and i think that um yeah i have to say like bravo to that because i uh, on instagram it's already a full-time job for me yeah and i do also um do video editing i know how long that takes so um just to be able to have people like to to create that identity and then to just like diffuse it on two different like platforms um i think it's it's spectacular um do you have any secrets for like your rhythm because you post all the time <laughs> non-stop great quality content consistent content Thank so you. share with us some of these tips <laughs> well that's great to hear because i don't always feel that way i think sometimes we can get in our hope okay yeah, i get that yeah I get yeah that. we definitely can be our own harshest critic but i i saw a quote the other day and i thought this is so true and it was something to the effect of you have to have you won't always have motivation so you have to have dedication yes. i think just I like carving that. out the time and just knowing that not every day is gonna you know there will be days that you don't want to post you're too <laughs> tired you don't want to film you don't want to edit but you just have to do it and put in the time kind of put your head down and grind because that's the way that you're really going to start seeing results and just start building up your community and as your community grows and when you have that genuine connection with your audience 
it inspires you and suddenly you want to post and you want to push and you want to take all of the time in the world. So I think just being consistent is, is key. And it's just key. carving out that time, whether it's, you know, time in the morning, time in the afternoon, time in the evening, whatever goes with your schedule, especially for posting on Instagram. YouTube is now my full-time job, so I really have no excuse. <laughs> that is what I'm doing on a daily <laughs> basis, but I really have to push myself to that's create not easy. content for Instagram. It's not Because easy. that's actually when you, you're you basically working on a on blank schedule, yes. and you basically have to do with the things that you re exactly, yes. the things that you Discipline. must really have to do that's on your right. daily life, and then just creating your content. Tell me about one of your biggest collaborations because one of the things that I know our followers love is just to like know how much we benefit and they can they just dream about this lifestyle of like you know benefiting so much for brands maybe there is like something more memorable or something that you know touched you so there are two that come to mind um the first one would be a collaboration i did with house of siage they are a luxury fragrance house I had known about the brand. I remember seeing the beautiful fragrance bottles on the Neiman Marcus website and just dreaming like, wow, one day I hope to own one of those fragrances. And it was maybe a couple months into um, doing my fragrance videos, I got an email from them reaching out, asking to collaborate with me. Awesome. And I thought, wow. And I remember telling attraction. my husband, yeah, I said to him, you know, I'm, you know, I'm still small, I'm still growing, but this is going to be one of those those days that I remember like this is a turning point like mm -hmm. I remember my first big fragrance collaboration and since then I've worked with the House of Creed and other big fragrance yes, houses nice. and then another one last holiday season I worked with Sephora and that was an amazing opportunity thank you so much Erin for coming today thank you for it was me. lovely a pleasure to have you <laughs> thank you guys follow Erin we see you soon and ciao bye bye